around 15 minutes ago, a deer was in our garden. I dropped a couple of F-bombs, but that's usual. But we're going to be talking about irrigation systems. You might be wondering, how does that tie into that? Well, basically, it's possibly been trampling our irrigation systems, which is pretty bad. So let's talk about building one of our own. And I hear one, I think. So before I begin this video, tutorial part of the video at least, some people question me, like, if you're just beginning your garden, what the hell is an irrigation system? Well, to sum it up pretty quickly, it's a long pipe, usually made in a couple, th couple hundred feet, that waters your garden for a set amount of time. And basically what this does is it basically just makes your life easier. It needs to be connected via a hose nozzle, but other than that, other than turning the hose nozzle, you can now wa water your garden without having to go through the hassle of spending two hours of uh, every single two hours of your very own life every day to water this thing. So it's pretty easy, and let me walk you through building it. Now I can't like necessarily build an irrigation system right up for you, that would take me a couple days to film that video at the very least. So, first thing you need to know is that you're going to need a water supply, and our water supply is as well right here. I'm not going to put my camera in there for obvious reasons, my balance is I'm not going to make sure, I'm not going to drop it in there. Now here's the thing about this, so... What you're going to need is you're going to need a water tank so we can store your water. Now here's where a lot of the complicated stuff goes into play. So firstly, you're going to have all these pipes that are going to connect to this thing. Now, a lot of this I can't really explain to you, but I think this pipe right here sucks up the water or takes water from the well and then it puts into here. It's one of these pipes. It takes it and it puts into this water system and then what this water system has is it has this white pipe and this travels all the way down here and this white pipe will connect to a hose nozzle out there and i'm gonna go show you that really quickly all right so here's the hose nozzle that connects to this thing and what this does is it transports water through this green pipe and it heads out to the garden obviously i think you probably know how water travels through hoses. I mean, I learned that in first grade. I'm pretty sure you did too. But that was years ago, okay? Some people do forget. But here is where we had it into our garden right now. And there are these black pipes that are scattered across this yard. And all these black pipes are hooked up to a system that'll spray the water at any given time. Now, here's the thing. Every plant has different standards. So, each one of these pipes have a different system attached to them. So that means that like it provides them with the proper amount of water. An irrigation system is going to require a lot of programming. If you, to build a really advanced one is going to require a lot of skill, knowledge, and a lot of your precious time. So on, a key thing to keep note of is to make sure you have the time to build this stuff. Now it's time to get your pipe. Really easy. Just remember to make sure you get more than you actually need, just in case, you know. And I'm not talking about, like, a giant, like, I don't know, um, plastic pipe that, like, you would see in, like, your storm drain. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a really thin material like that. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to make sure that there's holes poked into this thing. And the water will just spit right out of those holes into the air, basically. I have some footage of that right above this plane right now. And that's actually from um, one of my transplanting videos that was posted on May 30th. So what this will do is it will water the garden, the plants around it. And you keep it on for, I gotta say, about an hour or two based on each plant. And then once that's done, you need to turn off the hose nozzle. So building it's a little bit hard. But don't you worry, you'll get used to it pretty damn quickly. Just remember, I haven't built this, but I've watched people build these before. So this is just my general knowledge about this topic study. So when you look at this, irrigation systems, they are really satisfying to pull off for some reason. Just like any large project, it's so satisfying to pull off and just know that you're done with it. But what happens when your satisfaction is crushed? If you walk into your garden and you notice that irrigation systems are crushed, you have a, a main culprit that you should be take, keeping out for, deer. Do you want to know what? There was a deer in my garden just 15 minutes ago. I'm gonna let you in on that. And that damn deer visits my garden every day. And um, 
first he was over at the strawberries. Then he was over, um, then I remember like he bit off the foliage of our tomato plants. It started to come back now, but he bit the top of it without trampling the entire plant. Now, yeah, the deer has discovered our garden, but it's so close to our house. So a few plants I'd recommend planting to keep the deer out of your garden and your irrigation system too is oregano. A good plant is oregano. Oregano can basically be grown everywhere in the summer, but I'd recommend taking it in in the winter since it is a multi-seasonal um, one. The only multi-seasonal plant we currently have in our garden is um, strawberries and maybe peppers. That's pretty much it. But the deer has found out about our zucchini, which will make the filming of tomorrow's video a little bit harder. Because if you look on one of our plants, this one right here, if you notice that like there's something bit off right there, that's the deer. I'm not gonna touch it just in case that was pretty recent. But yeah, you're gonna have to rebuild that entire section of your irrigation system if the deer gets in and tramples it. Because deer have big hooves. Now just remember, every time you just remember, the deer, they might be scared of you at first, but eventually they might build up the courage every time you chase them away. So there really is no other option for you but to maybe get rid of them in another way, which I would mention, but yeah, I'm not. It doesn't need to be mentioned. I think it's pretty obvious. But yeah, deer, they are so annoying when they're in your garden, so you should always be on the lookout. Make sure your dogs are always near your garden. Make sure your garden's near your house. That way your dogs can be near your garden. Make sure like your other pets, like if you have like chickens, make sure those are near your garden. And I'd recommend a fence higher than 10 feet, which is a lot of work. But at the very minimum, do a six foot fence. I'm five six, so it's about six more, six inches taller than me. So, <clears throat> Yeah, a six foot high fence is strongly recommended, but if you wanna go the extra mile and build a 10 foot high fence, be my guess, it's just gonna take a lot of work, a lot of money that you most likely don't have, and a lot of drilling and potentially breaking your tractor if you have one, because you might be using your auger. Let's end that video right now. Subscribe so that way I can reach 1K, and let's end now.